Okay. There's about a 10 second lag. So. And here we go. There's about a 10 second lag. Okay, so welcome to, are you gonna take over Ammon or? I, I'm, I'm easy. Uh, obviously the big man himself uh, isn't here, so I may as well. Um, yeah, welcome to the Bogus Hangouts, which um, we believe is a part of a certain person's legacy that needs to live on. Um, he always loved these shows and uh, we loved spending time with him and with each other and we want that to carry on. I think uh, we all knew that. Uh, so, you'll recognize a lot of the reprobates uh, here, but we have added to our roster Jeff Ferguson. Really nice to have you here, sir. Hello. But uh, let, let me uh, let me go around in order. Terry, introduce yourself. Uh, Terry Van Horn, uh, Webmaster T. I come from, live in Toronto. Uh, don't take clients for SEO anymore. I'm pretty well retired. I do what I want when I want. It's nice. You did what you want when you wanted when you were an SEO. <laughs> <laughs> Bingo. Now I'm getting paid for it, though. That's nice. The difference. I got the pension, so uh, I'm getting paid now. So. <laughs> the better. government is paying you not to work. <laughs> yes, yes. They've, they've heard about the trouble you caused. They've gone, right, it's cheap. It's just pay him not to do anything. My reputation precedes me. <laughs> Doc, say hello. Introduce yourself. I'm Doc Sheldon of Web Narwhal. And, uh, oh, I guess I've been jumping in on these for about the last two and a half years now. I just like to stop by and, and rattle Terry's cage. He does make that a joy, doesn't he? He does. <laughs> it's yeah. You know, it's a guilty pleasure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jeff, you're next on my screen. All right. Uh, I'm uh, Jeff Ferguson of uh, Amplitude Digital and uh, UCLA. Um, yeah, been uh, since I'm like new, new. Like I said, I've been in the business for over 25 years at this point, and and. Uh, um, you know, I'm really excited to be here. It's uh, one of the things that it's nice to be recognized by this uh, by this crew, obviously, and and uh, uh, somebody that's been doing SEO this long. It's uh, it's good to good to be seen. So. Excellent, uh, Zara. I'm uh, Zara Altair, and I am completely bogus. Um, I I write, but I feel it's important for people who write for the web to understand what's going on. And um, I have I have learned so much, and it's because of all the people here. It's it's a gift. <laughs> it's a gift. It's a, a genuine pleasure. I like the fact that you've written in pretty much every format there is, including your own novels, of course. Um, do you find that the, there's a huge amount of mindset involved in the web as opposed to other media? A huge amount of, I'm sorry, what? Do you find there's a huge amount of mindset shift in writing for the web over writing that you've done before the web? Well, it's certainly a lot of mind shifts since I started writing for the web. Um, one of the things that got me interested in SEO was back in 2013, 2012, 2013, somewhere around in there. I was taking a leadership program. It was a six month program. It was very cool. But they had one, one of the units in this program was about SEO and it was old SEO. And I was like, wait, I don't think like that. Nobody thinks like that. Who is going to read this garbage, you know, <laughs> with the multiple keyword stuff? Um, and so I went, all right, this, this has to be wrong. I'm going to find out what this SEO stuff is. And uh, immediately found um, 
Lise Smallwood and Nodex and David Ammerland. And that was, and soon thereafter, you, Ammon. And that was sort of the start of, of my journey. And there are still people who are doing it the old way. Um, and, and I find it concerning. And I think that it's really hard for someone who is writing. Gosh, I wish Gina was here right now. Um, it's really hard for someone who's writing for the web to talk to whoever it is that's involved in the business and say, you know, strategically and genteelly that your SEO is all wrong. And uh, it's like, who are you? You're not an SEO. And it's true. I am not a technical person. I don't go in and tweak all that stuff, you know. Uh, but, but when you're giving me six keywords and that's all you're measuring, that's not the way to do it um so i think one of the one of the real challenges ammon is how do we who write you know instill new values and and new thinking about how you're reaching your organic traffic and what it takes to do that if that makes any sense and honestly, that's a question that all good old school SEOs are still asking themselves every single day, even after, you know, 25 years in the business. We're always trying to better understand our users, better understand intent. Google still struggling with it themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, that's always a, a fascinating side of it. I mean, Jeff, you've obviously got the different sides of writing. Uh, as well, because, you know, as well as doing client side SEO, you're doing quite a bit of article writing. Uh, and of course, I am absolutely confident that you have to produce a rather different kind of report sometimes for your uh, university and academic work than, uh, than we're used to in SEO. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the um, the academic side has been like really interesting. You just approach it from the standpoint of, of um, I guess trying not to sound uh, like a lot of the, um, you know, the, the, the web course, you know, SEOs that are out there, the, uh, um, you know, take my course, subscribe to my, you know, limited run or whatever, this kind of thing that are out there that, that uh, add in a lot of uh, hooey, I guess is the best way to put it, but like it's, it's, uh, and, uh, um, you know, that still are kind of trotting out a lot of, uh, things that have been debunked and things like that. So you were, it, you know, in the, I know in the classroom setting, we really boiled this down to the idea of like, this is, this is real. This is true. This is stuff that's verified. This is stuff to do it. And, and I had, um, I had been working in on it uh, for some time uh, because I've been writing a book for what feels like the last five years and, and, and haven't finished it yet. But the, uh, uh, but when I started teaching, I ended up taking a lot of the core material for that book and, um, kind of repurposing it and, and kind of use it as an opportunity to go through and say, all right, let's, let's get this in front of some people and, and see how they react and how they push back and how they interact with it. Are they really learning? Are they understanding all these concepts to it? What are they missing kind of stuff? And it's, so it's been very good for that kind of thing. And I think it's, um, you know, give me another reason to, um, uh, to delay the book a little bit more, but <laughs> the under the idea that I'm actually like, I'm actually still learning this stuff. I'm still uh, learning how to communicate it, I guess is the best way to do it. And, and um, as it is, the book was from a, a different standpoint uh, anyway, uh, as I've always kind of come at from this, this idea of um, kind of SEO as, as a form of digital transformation for companies, especially enterprise companies and things like that. And, and I'm um, not trying to do it from this, kind of classic tips and tricks way that a lot of writers do uh, with the web kind of thing where it's, it's really these very limited, um, you know, studies, if you call them, they're not really studies and they're, and they're truly not anything remotely close to a scientific test, but they, they still love to publish them and say, Hey, look, I did this twice and look, it kind of worked a little bit. So uh, I must have Sometimes not even twice, uh, every twice. Right. And it, and it, so it, it must be a trend. This must be the way that kind of stuff works. And um, so to kind of throw that a lot out and, and um, you know, that, that influences obviously you've probably seen some of my other writing for, for the search engine journal, uh, where I go through and just um, 
you know, try and take apart a lot of those things because I just have zero patience for uh, things like that. The article I wrote a few years ago about, you know, the the, the really sad state of, of all these SEO studies that have been done over the years where the, you know, they just have no um, way of looking at as to statistics properly and and uh you know everything they kind of throw out is really just this a whole pseudoscience and and uh um any other industry that get laughed out of the room for trying to present this as as like a real finding or anything along like that but meanwhile people just kind of seem to line up and say yeah this is the way it works whatever it is and and uh, you, you say yeah, that and yeah I, I can only imagine that you completely missed the pandemic yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 it's funny that was uh, a lot of it yeah it was it was a fantastic example of just how uh, like how bad it is, and it, but it's also you know how how susceptible people are to just about anything, especially when you've got you know when you actually have real experts that are out and and putting things in front of you and saying, hey, look, we we've done this, we've studied this, or at very least admitting we're still working on it. This is still something we're learning where it is, and so give us a minute. This is like a brand new thing. We have to figure this out, and then you know immediately kind of people throwing it out and. You know, listening to Joe Rogan instead, or whatever it is, like, like that. It's like a perfect example of of um, in the SEO industry as well as we've got we've got our own Joe Rogans that are uh, popping around in this industry that do a fantastic job of um, of being showmen and and um, you know uh, trying to get their things out, whatever it is. And then meanwhile, you've got all the rest of us that are kind of work for a living <laughs> uh, in this business, whatever it is, that have to kind of clean up their messes uh, as a lot. And I know. Uh, uh, Christine uh, and I, another friend of ours, uh, I'm sure many of you know, whatever it is, that's that's our, our eye roll of, uh, you know, of every couple of weeks when a new client comes in, you can just tell it's like, well, clearly they were listening to this person or they clearly they had this one beforehand and we know exactly where this them came from. Yeah. Came from and and uh, a lot of it lately is, is um, kind of uh, uh, unscrewing. <laughs> Uh, everything that a lot of people are doing in the name of eat that seems to be the the new uh, fix that we've been working on a lot lately and and uh, so yeah it's it's uh, interesting but uh, yeah and that it's funny that statistics comes around as we've had actually a, a great example this week and I think I mean you I think you shared it too but it was uh, um, like uh, over this past weekend John Oliver. Um, did a whole bit on on uh, some of the tech monopolies and, he, you know, he did it on Facebook and on Amazon and on Google, whatever it is, and kind of speak about it. But you know, in the middle of his broadcast, he shared a, uh, um, a, st a statistic, a metric, uh, whatever it is, that came from a, um, a really bad study that uh, uh, that was done at Spark Doro about, uh, about zero clicks and and uh, as soon as I saw it, I came up the screen because I usually watch that just as it comes out on Sunday nights. And I said that and I'm going like, oh, God, here we go again. You know, it's like it's, it's you know, this has been seen. And, you know, and it's not that I expect uh, John Oliver to, to find in his team to find my writings against it where I've kind of like shot that down and tore it apart. But there's been multiple people that have kind of said this is just bad science and it really wasn't done properly what it is. And, and uh, um, I was kind of happy to see that uh, um, numerous people actually responded to uh, John Oliver or um, last week tonight's like Twitter feeds and things like that with my article. So that was, that was kind of very nice. And my, <laughs> not just from a viewer's tip standpoint, but just to know, like, you know, there are people that knew about it, that, that kind of stuff, but I don't it's, like at this point, he doesn't do second, correction. Yeah, it's the so, second so. time in a month actually that, um, yeah kind of Google misinformation or, or poor perception has come up in the media stock, mm -hmm. uh, who I'll tell you to introduce himself just as he replies to this. But I know you shared Adam Savage's piece where he yeah. talked about his process of trying to buy a printer. Now, admittedly, there were problems in how he phrased his search, but mm -hmm. that's that's the bit Google is supposed to work out, not the bit that, that you know, we're yeah. supposed to worry about. And regardless, the results were garbage, and it meant that a lot of SEOs were targeting the wrong terms. Stop, mm -hmm. introduce yourself, and uh, if you've got anything on that, say it. Uh, I'm Scott uh, Trustwell. I do SEO consulting and all the stuff nobody else wants to do. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I mean, misinformation in SEO is not new. I don't even know what to say about it. I mean, we've been talking about misinformation since 2000 and whatever <laughs> you know yeah it's something back in our days uh, at creator site you know talking about we didn't call it intent back then but we did talk about understanding the searcher understanding the user i mean mm -hmm. you know creator site was a much more usability focused forum 
despite also covering SEO, than the, the majority out there and the user experience was something, you know, we were talking about in the noughties rather than waiting about eight years like most SEOs seem to. Well, um, I, I think part of it is with, with SEO too is it's kind of become this thing where it thinks it's the most important thing for the website. And, you know, SEO trumps everything else. It trumps content. It trumps, it trumps actually selling stuff to people. It trumps actually being useful. It trumps everything. As long as you're getting the people there, that's all that matters. And I guess on a news site or an ad site or something like that, that may be true to some extent, but I don't know. It's just, it's all got to be part of the big picture or it's all useless. I, yeah. it's, it's funny, Stuck, you mentioned that the, uh, um, that's something I, I tend to get into, um, get into it with on, on certain chats. And I think Emma's probably seen me do this before too, where, where you'll see people talk about it from this, this very myopic vision of, of like, you know, this is as an SEO, all you think about is SEO kind of stuff and you'll, and usually it kind of, I, I know recently it's come up from the form of somebody's going, oh yeah, we're going to delete all this content, uh, off the site because it's one of the things where they go, well, it's, it's no longer useful and it's not, you know, it doesn't get any organic traffic or whatever it is. And you go, I'm like, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm like, is anything else using it? Does it get its own traffic? Is it popular on social? Do real, you know, like, does it get direct traffic or whatever it is? And, um, and the fact that that doesn't come up in conversation enough is, is staggering, you know, like where they just kind of like, oh, we'll just get rid of it because, you know, because of uh, somebody gave us some bad advice on, uh, on, uh, you know, crawl budget or something like that. And, and you kind of go, yeah, I don't think you really got to worry about that. It's not something that, you know, but, but it's, it's, they completely burn through it. And, and uh, yeah, I know when one of the other forms and I, and uh, I think a couple of you saw it too, because I remember replies on it where somebody did a whole thing about like, you know, this is my eat checklist. This is all the stuff I'm doing for this stuff. And, and uh, you know, I just had to remind them, we was, Hey, look, that's, that's good. That's, that's, it's good that you do this kind of things. Just remember that like, you know, there's no score there. There's no other, you know, it's like, you're going to do it. A lot of these things you should be doing anyway. So feel good about that, but also be careful of this one and this one, because you could just, you know, basically cut off your nose to spite your face kind of thing. And, yeah. and uh, it's, it's really, yeah, it's a, it's a really interesting way to do this thing where they, they forget they're part of like a, a, you know, a marketing team, part of a marketing universe. And, and um, I don't know. Well, I, you know, I think that's key, Jeff, because, you know, over the years, SEO has, has stopped being just embed keywords and do your meta your meta keywords and 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 put it in the first sentence and the last sentence and the three times through the article and now it's come to encompass so much more particularly as the ai efforts begin to actually make some sense out of the context of, of a page mm -hmm. but now we've got things like schema and and you know all these different technical considerations as well it's almost impossible for any one individual to be let's say very proficient at all of those. So I think a lot of people have a tendency to pick the things that are easy, comfortable, that they're most familiar with and focus most on those. And an awful lot of people then tend to poo poo the value of the other things. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, if I'm content, if I'm content focused, then schema doesn't mean squat, you know, that's just a waste of your time. And vice versa. If I'm technical focused, then you know, as long as your content is intelligible and gets the user to do what you want, you're okay. Mm -hmm. And the, we lose sight of the fact that there's a lot of pieces in in the puzzle, and they're all valuable. And it's yeah. not just that there are a lot of pieces, Doc. It's that they're interconnected too. Oh, mm -hmm. sure, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so mm -hmm. there's, uh, you know, if if you're Focusing on the things you do well, you know, and ignoring the things that you don't do well, then then it's like shooting yourself in the foot. Because well, it's not are, even just, and it's not even just ignoring it, Sarah. A lot of times they're actually telling you everybody that it's a myth. Yeah. Yeah. Well, which is even you know, worse. What I was going to say when Jeff was speaking earlier is that they're like, um, it's like creating your own myth about stuff so it sounds intelligent yeah. but it's mythological it's not yeah. yeah yeah so then you get to do the same thing and then and then what happens is when when a business um takes on someone who's you know their seo person right whatever it is 
then the SEO person is feeding these mythologies to the business and it gets strange. The strange, that's a nice way to put it. Yeah, the uh, it's funny that to kind of do that point. The uh, uh, so the the way the the book was originally designed, and I and I still write this in other ways, and I, it shows up in not only in my class but in other things. Was this? I think my the big vision for it and the way I was writing this thing was this this idea. Um, was the book was going to be called Killing SEO, and it was it was from this idea of like the kind of a futuristic view of it in the sense that that SEO itself wouldn't die. Uh, because as long as there's search engines, there will always be some form of SEO needed to kind of make this kind of work properly and, and optimize for it and things like that. Uh, but the idea is that like who's doing it would evolve uh, over time and, and especially at the enterprise level or where I think it's going to start first. But I, it, it will be um, this idea that, uh, you know, I think at some point enterprise companies will kind of figure out this idea that, hey, look, we've actually got all the people we need to do these these SEO kind of related tasks. You know, we've got content writers, we've got uh, technical people, we've got, um, you know, uh, public relations people that can that can build links and things like that. We've got all these people that, that actually do it. And it's usually it's the same people that the, you know, the the so-called SEO person that's in-house uh, goes around and begs them to do their job kind of stuff or whatever it is. But it's, it's one of the things where eventually they'll kind of figure out and say, like, why don't we actually just make sure that those people are trained to know that piece of their job because it's yeah. you know this is the way this kind of stuff works and it'll evolve into it and, and you know eventually the the kind of the idea of having one person that is like i'm the seo person in an organization uh, will go away right it, it just won't be stuff and it's not that that there won't be like any focus on SEO anymore, and there won't be you know it's like there won't be somebody that's kind of responsible for looking at it as far as like a source of traffic or things like that it's just one of the things where it's it's just that all these other people will just go about their day job because it's just part of their job, right? You know, they'll they'll just know this is the upgrade of my current thing. My skill set has evolved up to include it. And um, I usually get a lot of pushback on that one because they 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 say like you know they're they're thinking at it very much from like this time, like this is the time that we live in, and this is what we're used to, and this is the way we have to work on it because we have to be the ones that chase this stuff down and things like that. But like it's 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 one of the things where I am talking about the future here, and this is something where it evolves out and it and it and it kind of completely transforms. And and um, you know you've just got content writers that know that they need to do a certain amount of research, you know, because like yeah, yeah, content writers are always a good example in the story because yeah. they go yeah yeah Jeff, yeah. Uh, lovely to have you here. You're about to get your proper initiation because <laughs> I saw that you rattled terry's cage there so i'm gonna let terry <laughs> yeah so come in was, and say what, what he his head, had yeah. on his mind yeah and then terry. and then i'm gonna raise my hand <laughs> yeah I, i'd start by saying there'll always be somebody who's putting the strategy together and making sure that it's being implemented correctly sure and that'll be someone at the yeah. head don't disagree there at all. Like that's that's okay, something. It's a, okay, yeah. so don't disagree. It's a, I just think that person's going to evolve, right? Yeah. I just don't think they're going to be like an SEO person. I think it'll be yeah, somebody else. Okay, in the organization. I, yeah. But yeah. Yeah. To an extent, that is my career. I, I describe myself as an SEO architect. Mm. Um, mm. You know, a lot of the time I am going into a company that, that it's got. They've got a dev team. They've got a marketing team. They've got all these parts. And my job is to direct them into an overall SEO strategy exactly. where they can all work together in a way that's going to work for, for one extra person, which is the search engine. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's it. You know, you, you are a manager, a project manager. You are um, the, the architect of the overall strategy. But you've got lots of people. I always like to have, you know, champions in each department. If you've got a web dev team, I will usually focus one person who's particularly keen on SEO, who's really fascinated by it, and they will become the go-to SEO person in there. If they can't solve it, they come to me. Um, and the same with the writers and the same with all the other departments. You know, have somebody in each department that is their go-to SEO champion, and that way the questions can be focused through them, an adjutant kind of position. 
yeah which which means my time goes further and, and cost the client less totally yeah. and i and i think those the my point is that i think those roles will elevate up i think it'll be i mean in the beginning uh, like right now as we try and do it and i've done this for organizations like the like the smithsonian and, and like uh manchester united and a few other ones where they they've got those people and they got what it is and you know i have to go in and do a deep dive education session but it's one of the things where i know it's not going to stick unless i teach them about change management principles with the idea of like hey look if you want this to stick around we actually need to change the way this organization works and how it looks and this kind of stuff and realize that this is part of the job and then realize that when somebody leaves they have to be taught about this kind of stuff too so it's it's definitely not one of those things where you know it's like you can just drop in once and say hey we're done and everybody should learn how to do this kind of stuff it really is a, a complete evolution of the way to do it um, and the reason why i was kind of you know, stressed that it's this is a future way to look at stuff is because it it could it's going to take years right and it's one of the it'll take years before yeah. everybody kind of picks it up but i i i was kind of pointed the the example of you know when you're talking about like the golden age of television back we're talking about the you know the 40s and 50s kind of thing when uh, television was first getting commercials on it in one form or the other and a lot of times they were they were live read style commercials or they were, or they were um kind of the soap opera you know like kellogg's presents kind of thing right so it's it's that type of thing in the early days of it and in advertising agencies they used to have um, a specialist that worked just with television advertising because it was new and it was different and it was a pain in the neck right it took so much more work than everything else it was way different than handling print or even early days of radio and stuff like that it just was a specialist and and uh if you want a good example out of it if you watch ever watch the mad men series there was a uh, one character on the show that was a recurring you know character who that was his job he was the television guy in the department and um that was there so that role kind of existed it was something for a while but over time and it again it took decades before that wasn't rolling time that role went away and it just became like as, as somebody that was actually trained as a media planner in school before I, I came into SEO, like it's one of these where now just everybody is just expected. You just know how to buy television. You know how to plan for television. You know how to whatever. So it's just evolved as part of like this is the everyday skill set for a media planner and for a media buyer um, and for anybody that's involved with it. And it's like that's the that's the world that I can see. And it's one of the things where I, you know, obviously it's not going to happen tomorrow. It may not even happen five years down the road, but it's something where I think if it's going to happen anywhere, enterprise will be the first one to pick it up because they love to save a buck. Right. <laughs> so they're They're going to go like, why do we need this other consultant? Why do we need this other person when, you know, the head of marketing or one of his people that are working for it can be the person that derives the strategy and actually, you know, it carries it out to everybody else. You know, why do we need to have like a separate copywriter just just for web content when we've got a great copywriter that does these kind of things and they can upgrade themselves, right? So it's it's those types of things where, um, yeah, it, it's got the kind of vision. Yeah, sorry, Doc. I think you're right that this is a natural progression that in the future is probably gonna come about. I would say take whatever arbitrary number of years you think is a likelihood and at least triple it. Yeah. <laughs> for, for one big reason. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was in business management consulting for years before I got into SEO, and the biggest uh, stumbling block for companies, especially the larger the company, the more so, was actually forming a team. Sure. Getting team members to willingly share both credit and blame when yeah. things didn't happen or did happen the way they were supposed to. And when you start taking what is currently one or two people performing this you know, a half a dozen tasks, and spread it out across a dozen people, These every single one of them is a single point of failure. Mm -hmm. And there is always, always, always going to be one of them step on their dick. Yeah. And it's, how do you budget for that? And that's the big thing with a lot of these companies. Exactly. The budget is king. Mm -hmm. The budget is everything. And the minute different departments expect to all contribute, but they may not be getting equal shares of the credit, or they may not get the equal benefit, you, you're in a nightmare territory. Well, and plus somebody at the board is going to realize that where you used to spend $20,000 a month, now you're spending $70,000 a month. But that's not the way we used to do it. Yeah. You know, we wh we always did it this way, which mm -hmm. we, we've all heard how many times. So, you know, it, it's an uphill battle. So I'd say, yeah. you know, triple, quadruple, quintuple. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's going to take us because, because 
while the uh, the industry may be evolving, we as people are devolving. I'm mean, sorry. Oh, totally. We're not yeah. team players anymore. Yeah, and that's that's the the really funny thing about it is is that I think one of the the biggest thing that's actually holding that concept back is the SEOs themselves because well they're constantly in the name of like keeping their own jobs. You they know, don't want to let like, go. It can't yeah. be done. Yeah, it can't be done. That's whatever it is, and that's and that's one of the things where like I, I was going to say, look, the people that are going to push back hardest on the on this idea are the ones that are just terrified of the concept because they realize like, well, where does my job go if if there's no SEO person anymore doing this kind of stuff? And and I said like you're you'll be retired by the time this actually happens, right? <laughs> like this will this will take so long to get out of here. You're just not gonna be a thing for you. I wouldn't worry about it too much, but like you should know it is, it is coming. It's just one of the things where, you know, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be, you know, Jim, whatever it is, not Z, but you know, whatever they call the next two or three <laughs> down the road. But yeah. The big difference of course, is that television hasn't changed in essence. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the screens yep. have got bigger and the resolution's yep. better and there's color and people have different expectations driven by media. Um, but the evolution has been pretty standard and easy to predict and there hasn't been any major change. You know, th- there's nothing in TV that's the equivalent of suddenly adding semantic SEO. Mm-hmm. Uh, there isn't anything like schema that, that comes along in TV. And that's yeah. that's why I think... Um, it's not going to happen simply because I think the internet is going to evolve into the next thing before the the jobs have, you know, I, my big prediction is that the screen is going to go away. The screen as we know it is going to go away. The internet isn't going to be something that we log into via a device or look at a little screen for. It's going to be all around us through augmented reality, through smart glass on, building fronts and uh, uh, bus stops and uh, uh, street signs where the internet is all around us all of the time and you know we're permanently in it oh totally a very good chance that that um, our current definition of a search engine could go away before that that fully happens right and, yeah. and i i think that is a very big possibility i i think you know everything that we're seeing right now and 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 usually a lot of the complaints you hear about search engines um you know are people like us that have to touch them every day in a different kind of way um for the most part the consumers seem to just you know be blissfully okay with the way these things look and say well this is just the way it looks it's fine what it is but you are starting to see some cracks you know the, the john oliver report is a, is a good uh you know example of the stuff but we've seen a couple of outsiders there was a new yorker piece where they're talking about how the results aren't as is what they look at even though it was completely flawed as they were based on on somebody else's flawed idea but it's one of the things where those type of things are, are bound to get bigger and bigger and that means there will be a shift there will be a a, a hole that comes up and you know it's one of the things where you know right now most people are, are kind of you know uh, asking for like the next great search engine somebody else that can dethrone google but i actually don't think it's going to be another search engine i think it's going to be something else that is that that will give us new access to the web in a different way but it's it's one of the things where that's that that'll be how that stuff finally falls apart it won't be because the government broke them up or because you know like because ahrefs um you know came up with their own search engine or whatever it is that's not going to do it right it's going to be something else that it's much larger than that that it will transform the way that we get to things but you know it's not going to be tomorrow but it's it's so it's just it's going to be ugly for a little bit longer but honestly i thought we'd come up with that once when second life first came along Mm -hmm. i thought that was going to have a big bigger impact than it did on how people use the web because it gave them a a different experience a a different way to experience the web Mm -hmm. where you can you know virtually travel meta is just the same thing but later uh you know it's taken it's it's taken facebook 15 years to work out what happened 15 years ago um i don't know that we're still ready for meta yet i think that like i I think think the the big drive at the moment is for the device to go away not changing how we experience the use of that device vr goggles don't change the fact that you know it's a machine and it's clumsy and you can't use it out on the street it doesn't become a part of your life you know the vr goggles are bigger and more clumsy than your smartphone which is how 80% 80% of the world use the internet. Oh, totally. That's, I mean, that's how I'd got there. I mean, I, I'd, so when I was in college in the, mm-hmm. in the, in the nineties, in the early nineties, 
Uh, I worked at Radio Shack and I sold cell phones and the ones we sold uh, were the big things that looked like they were, you know, like the, the guys used to wear on their back in, in Vietnam, you know, when their computer looked like a radio oh, officers. The, the status symbols. Yeah, the bag the phones, the big stickers. Yeah. When I was in San Francisco and um, worked in the financial district, you know, you'd see these guys with these things you know walking down the street with these things because it wasn't that they were communicating it was that they had the thing you see it right yeah yeah but even then they were they were so limited in the way they do <laughs> stuff and they, they really didn't get the reach and everything that we're seeing now and it's because they were so expensive and that's what it is so like and i think vr is still in that that kind of realm right now where it's it's a it's a big complicated goofy you know piece of machinery that you have to buy in addition and it's you know you're limited you have to kind of stay in your living room to do it you have to do stuff and and i know there there have been some visions of the fact that that it you know forces everybody to stay inside doing like i don't necessarily know that's going to happen but i mean um i think we saw was it uh, ready player one with the idea that society had pretty much collapsed into itself and everybody just right. kind of stayed inside or whatever it is but like i i can't see us really getting there i i mean it's it's one of these where i i think we'll instead come up with something that's a lot more portable something that is inside of it and, and uh something a lot more william gibson uh, i guess is my the view i've ever read william gibson but his stuff is just like you know through implants and through other things to where there's other ways to kind of jack into the internet that that are allow you to kind of do it everywhere or see it in different ranks but it's uh you know it's down the road but like you know we'll, we'll have these clumsy things while but it'll be a limited thing until they're just much easier to do it. Just like, you know, you know, the cell phones didn't take off to the, you know, the flip phone and something that was smaller and handheld really kind of came something you can put in your pocket. Until it gets there, people are going to like push back on this kind of stuff. I can't see people allowing a, a electro put into them for a device. <laughs> can't see it. Yeah. I, you know, there's need... a product, there's a product currently being sold on the streets in Japan. That, that doesn't made... mean. Hang on. This thing is about the size of a tiny transistor radio, clips on your belt. And then they've got, uh, a, it's, it's a different frequency, but it's basically a Bluetooth head, uh, earpiece with a mic built into it. And they're, that's their phone. It's down here on their belt. They could dial it. It'll take voice, you know, call George or dial such and such number, find me the nearest Pizza Hut, whatever. Then, so it doesn't necessarily have to be an embedded chip. It could just yeah. be Aware something because, yeah, people won't take a vaccine to save their kids' lives. <laughs> They're not likely to embed a, a cell phone in the back of their ear, you know. Yeah. But, you know, I, I, it's not necessary anymore. You know, it, there are ways to do it without without implantation. Yeah, they'll get, they'll get close enough as they can. Yeah. Anything that's as assistance are now being put into new homes like part of the infrastructure of the home yep. that's when it becomes big just like the internet didn't really start to get real legs until cable came mm -hmm. and we mm -hmm. got cable in other words it worked at a speed that was usable <laughs> you know, I remember doing it on the old 12 baud and 24 baud <laughs> yeah not usable yeah, that was still the hobbyist era like that. But once, uh, you know, once we get that yeah, faster internet it. around, yeah, what you could get, what you saw when you were at work, that was usually where most of us got like the really fast internet because we had, uh, you know, there was the, the, the T1 line. The T1 you know, line, yeah. Coming, uh, that was coming into the building. That was finally where you go, oh, this is crazy. This is going to change the world. But, you know, it's kind of like having a really fast phone and you're realizing that most of the world's still in 3G. It's like it's going to take some time. It's, uh, you know. I remember I thought we were in, in Buck Rogers times when I actually saw my first 1200 bucks odd modem i said whoa yeah <laughs> i remember how thrilling it was to go from 600 to 900 baud. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. yeah. was, but i want to um i want to go back in just a couple of minutes and 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 think about something that jeff mentioned about chasing and what ammon said about change management so kind of here in the present moment and not the future but that I, I think that we can help the people we work with by pointing them, leading them in the direction of change management and what's ahead and how do you manage change? How do you manage change here at ABC? You know, uh, rather than coming in and saying, I'm your new SEO tech 
expert and we're going to chase the best whatever uh so it, it's like a way of of not only thinking about what we're doing but a way of of i don't know the edu educating for lack of a better word but a way of of helping businesses think about what are they actually doing on the internet and what is it that they do want to do in the future on the internet um it, it's a tool it's everywhere um and and if you go to a business and and they're going to it's like everybody else is doing it so they're in this chase mentality and and that i think our jobs all of us is to help businesses bring them from that chase mentality into the change mentality how is it that you want to change your business and always back to you know but how is it that you want to connect with your buyers whatever it is that they're buying you know what Absolutely. is it that you how do you want to educate them uh and how do you want to connect with them emotionally you know how do you how do you get that emotional connection that helps people buy um but that all of our jobs is to help businesses manage change because things are always changing and, so and me, that you need to have one of your expectations is is that change is happening it isn't how we did it five years ago it's change is happening now what is happening now what is, you know that's the question of the day that's the question that we all ask each other all the time you know so what's going on you know and oh look you found this thing that's happening on um, and but but that and it's one thing to talk about it among ourselves which is really cool how we educate each other but then we have this next next um thing that we must do which is to bring that change awareness to the businesses that we work with so in a to an extent i say these are my approach to this is that it's always been the same thing what we're doing is we're talking about intent we're talking about objectives and we've got to get people out of the idea of following other people's steps and, and programs and more into what do you want to achieve and what is the most sensible way to achieve that and that's what the user is doing with their intent in search that's what your client is doing in their approach to you know their, their web strategy and that's also how they've got to change how their structure works to get the objective done and not to be in that position where they had a pyrrhic victory on a battle and lost the war mm -hmm. um which, and of which course, so often happens and one of the big stumbling blocks to that especially when you get into the larger organizations that tend to have more senior uh management people you know people have been around 60 70 years in the business rather, rather than being millennials is getting them to recognize that there even is to consider mm -hmm. because marketing you know if, if you look at a 60-year span marketing really hasn't changed the tools you know the channels have changed but the concept of marketing really hasn't changed and if they haven't changed internally to a focus on those new channels they don't see a change and they just don't want to consider it and i run into that all the time too yeah and uh, again this this depends on how people embraced marketing um i mean one of one of my early heroes was always henry ford uh, and particularly his thing whoever focuses on how much you can give away for a dollar instead of how little is bound to succeed and you know there, there are a lot of companies there's a lot of advice generally in society that it's all about squeezing the customer and getting the maximum profit you possibly can 
the minimum viable product, the thing I hate beyond all reason, this idea of, you know, minimum viable. I loathe it. I think it's awful. I think it's the worst possible advice. Uh, mm -hmm. Instead, focus on the maximum possible. It may take you a while to get there and you may iterate on the way, but always focus on maximum viable proposition. What's the most you can do that, that's still going to drive profit and keep you in business? Because that makes you almost in, untouchable until somebody can come up with something even better that you couldn't come up with, in which case you were beaten. Not unfairly, uh, not because you underestimated how much people could be manipulated, but because somebody outperformed you. They were able to do something even better. That That isn't yeah, just you're... about business. That's about society as a whole. That's how capitalism is supposed to work, that people come up with a better product and, and it it means that society and products and science evolves to the that's strongest. That's spot on. Not the yep. And in fact, if, if you don't believe that that's spot on, go to Amazon and or even Yelp. God, I just threw up a little in my mouth. Look at, <laughs> read through 100 reviews, and you'll find that the vast majority of the reviews focus more on a customer service that they feel they re received, rather than the quality of the product or the price of the product or the function yep. of the product. They're more impressed and they're more likely to take the time to go write a good review when the service that they got, even when the, when the problem was obviously their own fault. They misordered, you know, they, they ordered the wrong product. You know, when they feel like they've been treated specially by the company, that registers more strongly than when they feel like they got a great price or an extra function or better Absolutely. durability. Those are all pluses, but not nearly as much as being treated like gold as a customer. Okay. You know what? I'm, I'm going to stop rattling Terry's cage quite so much myself because I don't know if Terry might have grabbed some news and wanted us to cover. Uh, so I'm going to ask him before we move on any further. Terry, was there anything in the headlines this week that you, you wanted to bring up this week? Uh, not really, no. Eggs. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> so that is in all the other ways. That, that's good. That's, I, just, I, I didn't want you to have spent that. time looking up a few yeah. headlines. And, uh, <coughs> I've never covered it. There were a couple in the room earlier, but, you know. Yeah. yeah. I'm disappointed I, that IE6 is uh, you know, not we being could, part of that anymore. Yeah. But that's we, me. Well, I, and that's well, the guy, so. Yeah. I, I'm shocked. Terry, that, that uh, you would, would worry about a Microsoft product uh, not, not performing anymore. I, I, unthinkable that, that yeah, we could, <laughs> you might we could observe a, a moment of silence there for IE6, no? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We pour I, one out for him later on. Af yeah. After 12 years of silence, why not? <laughs> I, I, yeah. I, I, I have used it for, I actually even had to go back and look it up and goes, I thought it was dead already. It's like it's a, you know, it's like an actor you hadn't seen in a long time. Goes, did he dead already? I thought he was dead, but uh, yeah, it's just they they had other versions of themselves and they changed their name and and things like that. So, but uh, I guess it was what they really killed off was they just were going to support those last uh, you know copies of of IE yeah. that were still kicking around. But uh, you'd be surprised sense. how many oh yeah uh, very large companies are probably still using. It. Oh yeah. Yep. Imagine oh, yeah. that. Talk, talk about change management. Imagine that that memo going out every day. Because guys, we're, we're finally going to have to cut the cord on this one. You're going to have to go out to something else. And, it's and, uh, incredible. Yeah. I, I worked in a environment where they wouldn't even allow me to use Perl. Yeah. I remember <laughs> um, studying some time ago where, you know, quite a lot of, of countries basically get the, the, the products that, that aren't sold in our society anymore. There are parts of India where you know they're, they're still buying 386 pcs because they're <laughs> still on the market there because the people who overproduced them and had warehouses full are still trying to get rid of the stock and they'll sell them cheap somewhere uh and they'll often sell them cheap somewhere where they don't want to sell them the latest goods uh, or maybe they can't afford the latest goods you know mm, yep, um, so yeah the, you know there are still 386 pcs out in the wild used by companies around the world uh you know you just won't um, often hear them and i don't think those are going to run edge uh not that anyone should in my opinion edge is awful but... <laughs> that's all i use is edge yeah 
that I doesn't surprise me. I don't like Chrome because uh, I feel that Google sees everything I do on it, so I don't use it. Funny. I, uh, uh, it's funny. We were talking about change management and, and uh, you know, my back to my problem before about the uh, the evolution and and to Emmett's point of how like it'll take forever and Doc's point how it'll you know five times what it is. But like I uh, I worked at Kimberly Clark for a while uh, for a couple of years. That's one of the oldest companies in the United States they've been around forever they invented a lot of products we're used to so like there's a reason why you know we we call every tissue a Kleenex it's because of Kimberly Clark right and and uh they're the boss that that hired me um he'd been there for 30 years which was staggering like you just don't see that kind of stuff anymore and uh um, and I remember he was telling me that, uh, he was just, he was, you know, his moments away from retiring. He was really just kind of biding his time until he could get his time out of here, whatever it is. And, um, there was a computer in his office and he told him he'd like, he, uh, he resisted that thing for as long as he could. Like he just, you know, whatever. And, um, as his further resistance, he really didn't still use it much. You know, it's one of the things where, you know, and so he told you like, if you really wanted to like get a hold of me. It was still memos. It was still making an appointment with my secretary, that kind of stuff. And then we still had secretaries at Kimberly Clark, which I thought was mind blowing. But the, uh, um, but it was like that was you know the world to live with, and that's that's why like when Doc say like you know multiplied times five times or or that'll take forever. Like that's why I understand it's it's so true because that's the way it works. But it's it's the you know same thing Terry with uh, with IE and all these other ones. People hold on to stuff. They they get used to it. There's no reason to change those things. I mean we. Uh, I mean, if you look at every major industry you can think of that that now it's done in a certain way, um, and somebody mentioned uh, Henry Ford before, but it's one of the things where like even car manufacturing, like we had that tech for um, what we would look at as robotics um, for uh, for a decade before it actually went into like full use uh, because of the resistance of it, and you know, and it was the human resistance of like you know I will lose my job, I don't want to do this, or this is this we don't believe in it, whatever it is, and you know it could have completely revolutionized things that could have lowered the price of cars. It could have, uh, you know, made things easier, could have whatever it is, but it's, you know, people are going to push back on this kind of stuff. And, and so Honestly, it's, yeah. I think yeah. a lot of the resistance to robotics is the huge investment it takes. Mm -hmm. It's a big upfront investment Whereas doing the same thing. You've got a set, you know, you're already profitable with it. So whatever you spend this month, you know, you're going to make X amount back Whereas with robotics, you're looking at doing millions of, of dollars of investment and if something happens to your five-year plan you may never make it back if something happens and your company struggles in the next year or the year after that your investment in robotics may be the thing that sent you bust yeah that was what did it until they saw enough companies that had made their money back many times over that do you know what everyone else has taken that risk we can't be left behind we can't compete unless we upgrade. So it's it's the bullet we have to bite. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting for sure. Uh, I did want to. I mean, I, I know I'm the new kid, and and uh, I know how this works on this on the show and everything like whatever. But um, I did want to kind of go back to that John Oliver piece, just yeah. because I did made the news and what it is. But I wanted to kind of approach it from the standpoint of um you know his kind of his whole point about the about the the concept of is google as a monopoly and google the way they do it and and i think it's one of the things where i i've i've thought about before where the idea is like the way our our laws in the in the u.s are written here when it comes to monopolies whatever it is are are, are wholly out of date like they're just they haven't been touched in decades whatever it is and i mm -hmm. and like a lot of things the internet um kind of changed the way you look at stuff and and i think the reason why we're not going to see any movement on the idea of of Google, you know, Google as a monopoly, or even Facebook as a monopoly, or even Amazon as a monopoly. Whatever it is, because the way those laws are written is that they don't look like a monopoly in the eyes of of any law that is written at this moment. Because yeah. they every well, every way every way they can look at it, they go like, yeah, but we're really not a monopoly this way. They're not. Is in, yeah, and it's, it's exactly um, that. Look, yeah. it, it's it's imagine you've got a political party. Mm -hmm. Right, and they've, they've been really popular. The, the other party is just not really in the running. The, we've just had them, and they were bloody awful. Uh, <laughs> we've got a political party. They get eighty percent of the of the vote. A landslide. It has happened in history. Mm -hmm. Has that party got a monopoly? I mean, they have all the advertising budget. Well, look at all the tiny little independent politicians who couldn't get in. Yeah. Has that party got a monopoly, or did people have a choice? 
Right. Could they have voted other ways? And this is this is the thing with Google. Yeah, as a search engine, they're definitely not a monopoly. Bing is almost yeah. as good, and the only reason people aren't using it is they have chosen not to. Yeah. That's For a, whatever that's, reason, they still had the choice. Yeah, and I get Android I, may yeah. seem like a monopoly more so than than search is. And yet the iPhone is the one that everyone talks about. Right, totally it is. Doc. But, you know, one of the things that struck me about Rand's tweet uh, on this thing that really cut me to the quick. He I made the comment. Me years ago. <laughs> well, yeah. He, he said something to the effect of, you know, with, with uh, Google and Apple, and I don't know who the other one was, perhaps Microsoft, but he named three of them. Google and Apple were two of them, always, always focusing on their own products. When are we going to stop that? Well, Jesus Christ. You know, how many times does Ford need to mention General Motors in their ads? Of course <laughs> they focus on their own products, you <laughs> nitwit. They're, they're a business. Yep. This, this, this yeah. is the guy who wouldn't uh, speak at conferences unless he bought 1,000 copies of his book. <laughs> So, yeah. I'm sorry, you know that was. You one want to talk capitalism? That's capitalism, right? Yeah, I, I think I'm, I'm, you know I don't understand how that can possibly go over anybody's head mm -hmm. that they're a business and they're, yeah they're going to focus on their product. Oh, totally. And and what's weird is is that um, and that's one of the things I pointed out like in my article it was just in there was that if your point is is that Google's a monopoly or they're they're dominating they're focused on products there have been a couple different studies Rand even did one of them where the only thing they pulled out was the the percentage of searches that sent um, people to an actual Google product were about six percent right you know six percent out of all this stuff the rest of it was in the world and and even if you look at it from a standpoint of uh, you know, how much of Google searches actually have ads on them, which is their bread and butter. That's how they make billions of dollars, whatever it is. We're talking anywhere between two to 5% of actually like searches that actually have an ad on it. So it means that the majority of their site, they're just giving away for free on this one. And, and uh, um, even if you, you look at it from like, you know, well, what are they actually dominating? They, uh, are they dominating the search market? Yeah, but like, is that how they're really making the money? No, they're making money off advertising and they're just a drop, um, uh, they're just a drop in the bucket in the in the, the the even the U.S. advertising market, right? You know, because we've still got everything else. Uh, Amazon's got the same thing, but everybody goes, uh, "Oh, it's Amazon! They dominate! They dominate!" These kind of things to it. And in reality, in the United States, um, you know, all of e-commerce is only about fifteen percent, fifteen percent of the of the uh, of the retail market in the United States, whatever it is. And then, and Amazon's just a fraction of that. So it's really sort of like, well, what are they dominating? Like, there's so many other options on this. You're never going to get them that that way. Like to basically claim that they're they're monopolists and they're the way you can get them. And I think this is the way that they need to keep pursuing it. Is the idea is that if for, if they're doing things to keep competitors out, like if they're going through and constantly buying things up and um, uh, constantly buying things up just to shut them down, or if they're doing things to get other people to implode or whatever it is, then then that that is totally against the rules. And that's something you could catch them on or whatever it is. But nobody seems to be going that way after them. Instead, they're, they're actually just trying to say, not a monopoly. They're, they're dominating, <laughs> you know, 64 percent of no searches, which is a, you know, not only a real, not a real metric, but it's also things where it doesn't help your cause at all. It actually doesn't prove anybody's point that that's happening to that kind of stuff or use the kind of thing. So it's, it's, exactly. I'm going like, what are you trying to accomplish, man? It's the like, it's a monopoly. Like, what, what yeah. makes a monopoly is when you use that position to shut down any chance of competition when you stop people having the choice. The thing is, and honestly, I'd argue that ads are a Google product. But, but you know, when we're talking about Google products, we're not just talking about things on a Google.com domain. Every time you click through an ad or through a you know paid link on a carousel or through something that, that's eff effectively GMB based, technically that's a Google product to mm -hmm. me. Oh, because totally it is. Yeah. But it, it's, you know, it's, yeah. it's putting money in their coffers. It's, it's but, putting their agenda first. Yeah. But the fact is, if people don't like that, there are at least two other search engines they can go to that that won't be happening on. Mm -hmm. And if Google want to risk making one of those other engines suddenly succeed, remember what, what replaced AltaVista wasn't just that Google was better. AltaVista died in a sea of spam. Mm. The results on AutoVista at the end were terrible. They'd yeah. gone as far as you could go with on-page SEO. We'd all worked out enough ways to game it where 
the results were awful you had to go through on an average search i was clicking through five six pages of results to find something yep now that's part of what drove people is we've just talked about you know the fact that people stick with ie6 and people stick with old practices years after they're out of date because they're comfortable with it and they don't see any need to change well that that if alta vista had been still working enough uh, that they didn't feel like it was a complete waste of their time they just stuck with alta vista back then trust me i, I remember these times and, and the same with ask ask was very popular Tioma technically was a better engine than Google in some ways, but it didn't have that brand recognition. There's a lot going on, and I don't think I agree with you earlier. Where I don't think another search engine is going to replace Google. Partly, too many people want to work at Google if they're in that field. You know, Google's got the budget, it's got the research development, the the people you can interact with at Google are phenomenal. I remember talking with uh, Pedro Diaz. He learned Python from the guy that created Python. That yeah. happens at Google. You know, the, the people you can interact with, uh, the the intelligence around you, the things you can learn and do, that's phenomenal. And a lot of people are always going to want to work at Google, which means Google is always going to have a bit of a staff monopoly. And if they've got the staff monopoly and the talent monopoly, then but again, it's free choices. They could have gone elsewhere and they didn't. You can't penalize Google for having to be the best. Yeah. Or and that's being perceived as the best. Yeah, and 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 to your point, you know, that's even uh you know, that's even the, the, the real point with the idea of, of Google where people said, you know, oh, they're doing this thing. They're you know, they're they're make you know, their people are, are using their um, you know, their travel search function or they're they're having them use this kind of stuff. And I go, Well yeah, they invented this platform. Like why why is everybody like it's their thing? <laughs> you know, they made it. People are coming to use it. Like, what did you expect them to do? Like, you know, like it's in I think it's one of the things where and I could it's funny, I could understand this if if um this was the uk or this was some other country where if things were whatever and um you know there was you know that that capitalism wasn't the 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 way that this stuff was supposed to be working but in the us this is totally the way it works so for people to step up and do this thing you're like what did you expect them to do like this is this is like they created this thing they want to do this stuff they're not a public utility <laughs> right they they you know like i mean if you want to make them one of those things like you can bring that argument up all day and said like oh. you know this should be part of the part of it but good luck on that one right you know like nobody's going to go for that one because that's not capitalism that's not the way this country works right you know it's it's we've uh, uh, we've got yeah. around this off uh yeah. for that i was like this was an old argument there used to be this thing about they wanted uh, more regulation and google should be declared a public utility at which point i pointed out that at that point manipulating google becomes messing with a public utility do you want to see what some kind of sentences that would cost for space yeah, yeah. yeah. When your government is coming down on you yeah if yeah. you don't like the the quality of the results now just wait a couple of weeks they'll go totally to hell yeah there is a an old tradition that that we had in rounding out these shows and i'm gonna gonna go back to that in memory my friend um terry what are you up to in the coming week oh me yeah <laughs> what plans have you got for this week uh i've been working on some a theme and a plug-in i keep plugging away it's been a year and a half now every day i do a little on it keep plugging away very nice good pump <laughs> doc what are you up to this coming week uh working with a couple new clients and paired up with steve and rob and trying to continue to get web narwhal cranking I'm, I'm not sure about the name personally. Uh, you know, I, I'm not sure I want to think about horny fish every time I think about <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, what are you up to this coming week? Uh, it's going to be busy. I, um, you know, some things that Amplitude, my company, are actually changing. And unfortunately, I can't really fully talk about them in the, in the public just yet. But they're um, in July. It'll it'll be a little bit different, uh, I guess, around there. So that, that'll I can talk about that later but the uh, uh but we've also come into the idea of uh, prepping for um the summer courses over at ucla 
uh, or come out of bond, I'm, I'll be doing that again. I'll be doing my SEO course on this. So there's there's things to fix, things to update. Uh, I'm going to make sure everything's not falling out of way and since the last time I did the presentations. And, and, uh, it seems like the record store is just a, a thing every other you know hour that I have that I you know usually would be sitting at home you know trying to catch up on the new Obi Wan series. It's uh, I'm instead I'm over at the record store cataloging and doing something like that. So, but uh, yeah, never a dull moment around here. Excellent, Zawa. How about you? Um, I am uh, at work. I am working on shifting content from basic sort of informational stuff to um, more of a presentation. It's for um, career coaching, that particular part, uh, to more about the benefits of coaching and how, speaking of change management, you can go about change management in your life. And also, I had submitted a short story to an anthology, just as you were, and, um, and they sent me, and after I had submitted it, I went, oh my God, it needs this one more sentence, right? And I put in my copy, I put in the one sentence, and yesterday they sent me an email, we've extended the deadline, so if you'd like to, you know, make any changes, I'm like, yes. The sentence is in. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that rounds us off for this week. Uh, thanks to those who joined us. Thanks to all the panel here. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Take care. Goodbye, all. Thanks for joining us. Bye. See you.